What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Today I'm going to be watching a video that was produced by Wonder Why. I will have a link at the end of the video that you can click on that'll take you to their channel so you can watch their videos, subscribe to them, and all the good stuff. Uh, this video is called Winners and Losers, Episode 1, Countries. So if you don't know what Wonder Why is, uh, they're a channel. I can't say what their full channel is. I've only been uh, watching a few of these videos in this specific series that they have. Uh, they take a specific topic and they'll talk about statistics, like what's the biggest planet, what's the smallest planet, which one has the largest land mass, which one has the smallest land mass, and they'll just pretty much rank stuff, like based on statistics. Uh, this episode is dedicated to countries, so they're going to be taking uh, statistics from countries and ranking who ranks number one in specific categories and who ranks last in specific categories. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what it has to offer and represent your country if you see your country in here represent them like it's a sports team i want to see every i want to see some patriotism in the goddamn comment section down below nationalism maybe but don't let it go no farther than that let's go and get into this hello and welcome to episode one of winners and losers and in this first episode i'm going to be looking at countries this video will look at the different categories of country rankings and which countries are at the top and bottom of those lists the first category we're going to look at is size. The largest country in the world is Russia. Obviously. Okay, yeah, so no surprise obvious. there. I'm sure we all know that Russia is the biggest country in the world. But do you know just how big Russia is? About 17 million square kilometers. Okay, but those are just a bunch of meaningless numbers. Especially if you're not familiar with the metric system. Yeah. But here's a few things about Thank Russia that might help give some perspective. Number to it. Russia borders more countries than any other, sharing Sadly, land borders with 14 <laughs> different countries. Norway, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Belarus, Ukraine, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, China and North Korea. Well, that's 12 of the countries it borders, but it also has hmm. two Didn't more borders border because its North most Korea. western point, the Kaliningrad Oblast, which is separated from the mainland, gives Russia two more land borders. Lithuania and Poland. Although if we take a closer look at Georgia, a country that has two bet de facto space, independent space countries within it, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, I'm willing to bet that space is dedicated 100% to just storing nuclear weapons. Which have both declared their independence from Georgia, these self-declared independent countries have very little international recognition, or but one country that does that recognize both of them is Russia. So according to Russia at least, they border 16 countries. And let's not forget they also have extremely close maritime borders with the United States and Japan. Russia really is in a league of its own compared to other countries with second place Canada only 58% the size of Russia. Russia is more compatible in size with the continents of the world. Russia is bigger than three of the seven continents and only continents? slightly smaller than South America. Also, Russia comprises 11% of the Earth's land area and in terms of surface area, Russia is bigger than Pluto. Russia also has 9 different time zones, although it could be 10 because GMT plus 5 is skipped. Ok, I'm sure you get it now. Russia is big. And as mentioned, Canada is in 2nd place. In 3rd place is... Well, it's disputed. It's either China or the United States. Which country is in 3rd place is dependent on two factors. China's disputed territories and the water area of the United States. China has several disputed territories, including disputes with India, Bhutan, Vietnam, Japan and North Korea, as well as claims to the Spratly Islands, the most disputed territory in the world, claimed by six different countries. Of course, the easy solution is just to count none of these when calculating China's area, which is exactly what most sources do. The real issue is how the water area of the United States is calculated. Water area of a country should only include inland waters, but both the UN and the CIA World Factbook are biased towards the USA by counting coastal or territorial water for the US but not for other countries. Coastal water is defined as 3 nautical miles from the coast and territorial water is 12 nautical miles. Now, based on these numbers and the criteria for them, you would have to put everything on an even playing field. So if you're given, and I'm as an American, I'm saying this, is you're, if you're given America an unfair advantage by adding, like, what do they say, territory waters or territorial waters to um, their land mass, but you're not doing it for China, that is dishonest reporting. Or 
dishonest statistic keeping. Either way, you're adding, uh, you're giving one an advantage. So, I guess it depends on uh, if you take away the territorial water and you take away the disputed territories for China, which one is the bigger, which one is the bigger of the two based on that? That would be, I would say, the fair uh, statistic we should be trying to look for. Territorial water can seriously exaggerate a country's area. Take this hypothetical perfectly round island which is one square kilometre in area. Now if we include territorial water in its area, and by using a little bit of maths we can calculate that the area of this island would now be over 1600 square kilometres. The Philippines is a great example of why territorial waters are not counted, however both the UN and CIA are guilty of being inconsistent by counting coastal or territorial waters for the US but not for other countries. Yeah, they should only include inland waters Take a look at the state then. of Hawaii which is about 40% water by area. Now with a state this small it's not so bad, but with a state like Alaska, territorial water make an already massive state even bigger. Realistically, there is no dispute, China is bigger, but several sources list the United States as the third largest country in the world. But to completely remove the issue of water area, we could look at just land area. Counting only land, China is unambiguously bigger than the US, and all sources agree on that. However, if we're just counting land, then Canada drops all the way to fourth place behind the US. This is because Canada is about 9% water by area with an estimated 3 million lakes, which make up 60% of all the lakes in That's the world. That's a lot of lakes! Looking at the opposite end of the spectrum, the three smallest countries in the world are Nauru, Monaco, and of course, Vatican City. And since the Vatican is where the Pope lives and is about half a square kilometre in size, statistically the country blades. has two popes they per have square kilometre. In their flag. Comparing the largest and smallest countries, Russia is about 38 million times the size of Vatican City. Moving on to population now, and once again the winner of this category is pretty obvious. China, it's China. India, I think Second is United India States and is third, third is the United States. Okay. And while this podium shows their correct places, it doesn't really show the full story. A more accurate podium might look a little something like this. This is because second place India is nearly four times as populous as the USA. Together, China and India make up about 37% of the world's population, and it only takes the top six countries to make up half the population of the entire world. Mm. Now looking at that podium again, it would be easy to assume that India and China's populations are similar. And proportionally, maybe they are. China's population is only about 9% more than India's. In terms of sheer numbers though, not at all. The difference is huge, about 118 million, which is the same as the population of Mexico, the 11th most populous country in the world. Or if you prefer US states as a unit of measurement, that's 4.5 times the population of Texas or three Californias, or uh, 205 Wyomings. <laughs> or to further emphasise the population gap, the difference is about the same as the combined total of Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, Mexico City, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, London, Paris, Berlin, Rome, Cairo, Johannesburg, Moscow, Istanbul, Jakarta, Tokyo and Sydney. In last place is Tuvalu, Nauru and once again the Vatican City. Once again if we compare top and bottom with the list, China has about 1.7 million times as many people as the Vatican. But what's more amazing is if we look at the population growth of China, China's population grows by the population of Vatican City every single hour, with their population increasing by more than 19,000 every day. I didn't realize they had over 600 Although India's population people is growing much quicker, at about 42,000 people per day, so that's 29 every minute, or everything. about 15.5 million per year, which is the same as the population of Ecuador. India is set to overtake China as the most populous country in the world by 2025, and is set to break the 1.5 billion mark by 2033. Next we move on to population density. Population density is basically just how many people on average live per square kilometre, and is simply population divided by area. Unsurprisingly, the three city-states of the world are at the top of the list. However, if we include the special administrative regions of China, both of them make the top five. Although not sovereign states, they are basically treated as separate countries and their population and area are never counted within China's figures. Macau is so densely populated that if the population of the whole world lived as densely as Macau, all 7.1 billion of us could live within the country of Germany. 
and if every country in the world were as densely populated as Macau, the population of the world would be nearly 3 trillion. Of course, these countries are only so densely populated because they're so small. Be dead as a Using an arbitrary cutoff and only include countries over 100,000 square kilometers, Bangladesh is the most densely populated. The least densely populated country in the world is Mongolia. However, if we include constituent countries, then it's Greenland, with a population density of 0 0.026, meaning that there's enough room in Greenland for every person in the country to have 38 square kilometers to themselves. If the whole world lived as sparsely populated as Greenland, the population of the world would only be 3.8 million. That's about the same as the population of Los Angeles. If we swap the population densities of Macau and Greenland, Greenland's population would be over 43 billion, while Macau's population would be zero. Now we move on to something a little bit different. Homicide rate. Now there's two ways to rank the country by right, rate This is when you can count. actually brag. Rate is the number per 100,000 people, while count is just the number For those that have low homicide rates, don't brag if you have high homicide rates. how populated the country is. Ranking by rate gives the most accurate picture. The top two are the two bordering countries from Central America, Honduras and El Salvador, and in third place is Ivory Coast. If the world had a homicide rate of Honduras, there would be over 6.5 million homicides every year. That's 17,900 a day, or one every five seconds. Now if we rank the countries in terms of just the number of homicides, in which obviously the more populous countries have a disadvantage. The top three are India, Brazil and Mexico. And while India and Brazil both have around 43,000 homicides per year, this is actually a relatively low rate for India, lower than the US actually, while Brazil's rate is very high since mm. India is six times as populous as Brazil, yet only has 138 more homicides. Of course, this is one list in which being at the bottom of the list is best. Two countries are the clear winners of this category with absolutely no murders in the year of the study, and those are Monaco and Palau. But then again, it would be pretty hard to get away with murdering someone in Monaco, given that there's on average 18,000 people per square kilometer. So you mean to tell me if we use another Vatican arbitrary cutoff and only having murders all over the place? Most populous countries in the world, the countries that come out on top are Japan, Spain, and Germany. And well, on the subject of death, let's look at suicide rates. The three countries with the highest suicide rates are Greenland, Lithuania, and South Korea. Interestingly, suicide is far more prevalent among males across what all the countries and cultures. To have such a high One country that's worth mentioning is rate. Japan, with a fairly high suicide rate of 21.7. Combine that? this with an extremely low homicide rate of 0 0.3 means that statistically Japanese people are 72 times more likely to kill themselves than be killed by someone else. I think that's mainly a cultural thing though. Okay, that's enough about death now. On to age. The youngest country in the world is South Sudan, which declared its independence from Sudan in 2011. Sudan used to be the largest country in Africa until then, but dropped to third place with Algeria now the largest country on the continent. Interestingly, the second, third and fourth newest countries in the world all used to be part of the same country. In the early 90s, Yugoslavia split into five different countries. Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia and Montenegro and Macedonia. Serbia and Montenegro then split into two separate countries called, well, Serbia and Montenegro. Although technically it was the other way around, Montenegro declared its independence. Then in 2008, Kosovo declared its independence from Serbia. Although it's worth mentioning that Kosovo Sometimes isn't a member happens. of the UN but is recognised by the majority of its members. The oldest countries in the world are significantly more difficult, if not impossible, because of the different definitions of the word country. While countries like Egypt and Iran may be good candidates to call the oldest countries, having been around for more than 5,000 years, although they bear little or no resemblance to their modern day counterparts. Be sure to stick around if we for use just the day in which the country in its current form was founded, be then the, the oldest, oldest countries are countries Japan, China in and the world. San Marino. Although even that's debatable as it's such a complex issue that it could easily be a video in itself. And finally we move on to minimum wage. Top of the list are Luxembourg, Australia and Monaco. But these are just nominal values, they don't show any real value. Cost of living varies significantly by country, so money isn't worth the same in every country. To get a clearer picture, a hypothetical currency, the international dollar, was invented which uses the United States as a comparison and takes cost of living into consideration. Therefore, countries like Mexico and Poland which have lower cost of living, money is worth more, but in countries such as Norway and Switzerland, money isn't worth as much. 
For example, the federal minimum wage in the United States is 725, which is worth 725 in America, but it's worth different amounts in different countries. I think it's raised since then, like 8, 10 at of least. Of course, that's just the federal minimum wage and the average cost of living. For example, San Francisco has a minimum wage of 1074 because it's the most expensive city in the country. So if you use this international currency, Luxembourg is still on top, but with France and Belgium in second and third place, with Australia dropping all the way to fourth place. This is due to a very high cost of living in Australia, about 45% more expensive than America. The countries with the lowest minimum wages in the world are Cuba at 225 Cuban pesos per month, although it's worth mentioning that the government also provides free education, healthcare, housing and food for their workers. That's then there's communism. Sierra Leone with 21,000 of their awkwardly named Sierra Leone and Leone per month, which is about 3 cents per hour and the lowest is Uganda at 6,000 Ugandan shillings per month, about one cent an hour. Of course, there's plenty of countries around the world that don't have any minimum wage at all. Well, that's all for episode one of Winners and Losers, and in episode two, I'll be looking at the 50 states of America. Thanks for watching. So the next series is dedicated to the 50 states of america which i've already seen but uh anyway this is an interesting topic because i know that a lot of people like to show pride in their country um especially considering the fact that this channel has uh gained a lot of subscribers from europe and the uk and a lot of people tell me a lot about the history of their countries and things like that in the comments section and i mean I'm, i really like listening to them if you think that i don't read the comments you're wrong i read just about every single comment that comes through this channel <laughs> no matter how old the video that you comment on is i will see the comment my comment thing is based on when the comment is made not how old the video was that you commented on so if you comment something new it will pop up only time i really have a problem seeing comments is when they're part of a thread so if somebody comments and then you reply to it it's possible i might not get a notification that a comment was made but that's why I go through my videos every once in a while and I'll look for obscure comments. If you guys have seen this and you want to go ahead and list any context behind the numbers for your country, especially if it's bad numbers. So if your country has a very low minimum wage rate or if it has a high homicide rate or a high suicide rate, you got some explaining to do. So go in the comment section. And give me a good reason why the hell you're not holding up your end of the bargain as far as being on top of the world list. I want to know why the hell you're, you're in your grades are in detention right now. Or your grades are in, I guess, probation. Do y'all have probation? Our school had things that our, had programs we would call probation. Even though it wasn't like prison probation. It was just, you know, trying to find ways of helping get your grade up. Yeah, th this entire video, it really shines a light on where countries stand as far as, you know, quality of life and things like that. Uh, the United States is where I'm from. On the playground, oh, I, I fucked that up. <laughs> I'm supposed to say United States born and raised on the playgrounds is where I spend most of my days, but I kind of fucked it up. Um, the United States is where I'm from. Ohio so I'm not even from like the more popular states so even I haven't had a chance to experience what some people consider to be stereotypical of United States um, there are a lot of states that I mean there are a lot of statistics that could have get thrown or could have got thrown in there now the coastal water thing like I said I can understand why it can be controversial because some countries would want to consider water to be part of their territory because technically if it's a part of their country like you have international waters then you have waters uh, assigned to specific countries if that those waters are assigned to you then that would in a way be considered your territory I can understand that it's just if you're ignoring coastal and territorial waters for one country and adding them to another I see that as an unfair uh, comparison so only way to be fair is either to take coastal and territorial water away from that specific country that you're giving it to or give it to every country. That way all of them can compare that and use that as part of their statistics. I'm pretty sure they probably wouldn't have a problem with that. 
It'll make their countries look bigger. I don't see why people have an issue with that. Unless there's like waters that are under dispute. I think I've heard that the United States, or not the United States, uh, China and Japan have some water that they like are very, or they, they compete against. Mainly the East Sea slash Sea of Japan. They um, are, they have conflicts over that water all the time. But, I mean, what can you do? Either way, that's been this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. I look forward to seeing you guys in my future videos. Uh, again, if you haven't seen this video originally, be sure that you click on it and view it so that they can get the view and they can continue to make ad revenue on the videos that they do and they can continue to make videos that we all enjoy. If you did enjoy this, uh, also be sure to check their channel out. I will leave a link for their channel at the end of the... Damn it, I knocked my fork over. Hold on. <laughs> I will leave a link for their channel at the end of this video that you can click on and go to their videos and or watch their videos or subscribe to them, like their stuff, uh, you know, all the good stuff. Uh, so if you have any trouble finding their channel, you have no excuses. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and move on, try to find something else. Uh, and hopefully I will see you guys there. But until then, I will give you the deuces and I'm signing out. Deuces. <laughs>